quantum physics, in which the workings of the universe are described not in terms of subatomic particles, but as one-dimensional strings in their vibrations, in a universe containing many more than just four dimensions. Just thinking about it makes my brain hurt, so let's talk all things strings as it relates to music, especially guitars. In this episode, I'm going to explore different types of guitar strings, tunings, multi-string instruments like sitar and 12-string guitar, and a very unique device called the Gizmotron, which creates sustained mechanical bowing effects on your guitar strings. Let's start by looking at the impact that guitar strings can make on your sounds and your playing. Aside from nylon string classical guitars, which are their own category entirely, there are a wide range of metal strings for acoustic and electric guitars. When looking at strings, some factors to consider are gauge or thickness, type of winding, and the composition materials themselves, as well as coatings. The gauge of the string is generally how thick it is, which also affects its tension. When referring to the gauges as a set, people usually refer to them using the thinnest string, or the high E string, with the lowest, lightest gauge being 7s or 8s, and the heaviest gauge would be something twice as thick, like the 16 gauge E string that the surf rock legend Dick Dale reportedly used. Lighter gauges have less tension, making them easier to press down and also good for bending notes, but that comes at a cost of being more flimsy and also more prone to break, as well as potentially producing a thinner tone. My favorite electric guitar strings are tens, because they provide a good balance of comfort and tone and allow me to bend the high strings while still being pretty stable overall. On the other hand, heavier strings create a stronger, louder, more percussive tone, which can be especially useful for acoustic guitar. I switched from 12s to 11s on my acoustic guitar to make it more comfortable to play, but I regret that because I no longer get the solid plunky thud out of my bass strings. The core of a string can either be round or hexagonal, with round strings imparting a more soft, mellow sound while hex ones tend to be more snappy. Winding refers to the metal wrapped around the core, which comes into play with the low E, A, and D strings, but can also apply to G string and more. The most commonly used strings are round wound, which have a bright tone, but I actually prefer flat wound strings. These strings are purported to have a darker, mellower tone, so they're often associated with jazz, but the reason I love them is because my fingers can easily move and slide up and down the string to any fret smoothly without creating zipping or buzzing sounds. Also half round strings, which are round wound strings that have been flattened to create a smoother playing surface while still maintaining a brighter tone. To me, the most important factors in strings are the ones I've already mentioned, but there are also a variety of metals used in guitar string construction, including steel, nickel, brass, and bronze. Most strings tend to be steel based, but electric guitar strings often use nickel coated steel for a slightly mellower feel, and pure nickel strings can be even mellower. Acoustic strings are often brass or bronze coated steel, with brass having a brighter, sharper sound, while strings such as phosphor or bronze offer more of a warm, rich tone. These strings also have the option of being coated with a polymer layer, which protects the strings from dirt and corrosion, but can also make them more slippery and can potentially dampen the tone. The coated strings also tend to cost more, and over time that coating wears off. Of course, there are several guitar string manufacturers, and many people have their preferences for various reasons. For electric guitars, I personally prefer the Dario, mainly because the first electric strings that really clicked with me were NYXL 10s. I also have taken advantage of their player circle, in which you can register each pack of strings to earn points that can be redeemed for free strings or other Dario products. Having said this, I feel like other brands might produce superior strings for acoustic guitars. My current strings sound dull compared to elixirs I've previously used. Likewise, even though flat wand Adarios are great, I made a switch to Tomastic Infeld Jazz Swings because they have a set of 11s that includes lighter gauges for the bass strings, and I'm loving the way these feel and sound. Speaking of strings, let's check out a guitar that has plenty of them, the Dan Electro 59X12. 12-string guitars have twice as many strings, making for a more lush and ringing tone than a standard 6-string guitar. However, the sound is also different, since the four low strings are paired with one that's an octave higher, while the two highest strings have pairs tuned in unison. a jangly range of harmonics otherwise not obtainable on a typical six-string guitar.
The 59X12 is a somewhat modernized, more versatile take on Dan Alicho's classic 12-string guitar because it includes a variety of pickups. It has dual lipstick-style pickups at the bridge, which can be played together for humbucking style, or it can be split to have the classic retro bell-like single-coil Alnico chime. However, there's also a single coil P90 in the neck, which provides a very different, more clean and modern sounding tone. switch over to the P90s for more subtle and modern tone. One way to extend the versatility and creativity of the sounds you're getting out of your strings is to tune them differently. There's a limit to which notes you can reach with each string because tuning too low will cause the string to be slack and loose, while tuning too high could produce too much tension or even break the string. I'm going to share two of my favorite alternate tunings, starting with FAC GCE, which is best suited to playing in F major or C major keys. This is a tuning that's typically associated with math rock and emo genres, but I love it as just a way to get beautiful lush chords in which you can create variations while maintaining great drones and harmonics on the other strings. I like to dedicate certain guitars to specific tunings, so right now my Schecter Reaper 6 is dedicated to this tuning. Open D tuning is another great option, which is tuned to D, A, D, F sharp, A, D, creating a D chord when the open strings are strummed. This allows you to create chords simply by barring any fret, and also makes it especially useful for playing with a slide, which I'll demonstrate on my very inexpensive Squire Bullet Telecaster. It's also easy to create a variety of chords using only two or three fingers, including B chords that are much more difficult in standard E tuning.
recently upgraded this bullet Telecaster with a very unique device, the Gizmotron. The Gizmotron was invented in 1969 and patented in 1975 by Kevin Godley and Law Cream of the English rock band 10CC. The idea was staggering in its simplicity. The guitarist would no longer need to use a plectrum to pluck the strings. That would be done by a revolving wheel suspended above each string. On each wheel, 48 tiny plectrums. By simply depressing a lever, the guitarist lowers the wheel to pluck the strings more than a hundred times a second. In effect, vibrating them just as a bow does. And in 2016, a modernized, reimagined version was released to the public as Gizmotron 2.0. This device is a motorized box that mounts onto the guitar and causes spinning wheels to rub against the strings with the press of a button, causing sustained vibration similar to bowing a violin. Unlike similar devices such as the electromagnetic Ebo, which I showcased in episode 8, the mechanical nature of the Gizmotron allows it to have an immediate attack, and you can apply the effect to several strings simultaneously. <laughs> Let's hear how it sounds with some effects applied. Let's see just how many strings we can use in the creation of a retro song with a somewhat psychedelic vibe. To start off, I knew I wanted to make a song infusing some nostalgia of psychedelic rock from the 60s and 70s, and I decided to call it Astral Traveler as a nod to the New Age spiritualism at that time. I decided that a good way to evoke this vibe was to incorporate jangly 12-string guitar like the Birds, as well as some sitar like you might hear about the Beatles or psychedelic bands of the 60s and 70s. The sitar is a traditional stringed instrument from the Indian subcontinent, and even though you only play four of the strings, there are two additional drone strings, as well as 13 sympathetic strings, that aren't played but resonate for background harmonics, making for a whopping total of 19 strings to tune. To set the tempo, I started with some loops from the bedroom pop drum kit by Kavas. My intuition led me to try the loop called Strawberries, because it's in C major, which is the same key as the sitar, and also because the name made me think of Strawberry Fields Forever. Turns out, I liked this basic beat, but it needed a little something, so I added the rhythmic shaker sound of the loop called Youth, and this also gave me a little bit of dynamic range to drop some of the beat at certain points of the song while still keeping other parts. Next I played around with my Dan Electro 59X12, using the bridge split to a single coil lipstick pickup for that chimey retro sound. <laughs> I also decided to add some movement and a more psychedelic vibe to this when I entered the chorus part by applying some stereo phaser from my Walrus Audio M1 modulation pedal. string-like swells as a rhythm backdrop for the jangly 12-string guitar, but I don't have a string ensemble. What I do have is ensemble mode on the Strymon Cloudburst Ambient Reverb pedal, which adds a pad-like layer similar to synthesized strings. I used the mezzo piano version of this and added electroharmonics attack decay before it to get lush undulating volume swells. more 
instrument later to fill things out a bit, and for this I decided to look for a retro keyboard sound for my Teletone Audio Vespertone instruments. I started exploring vibraphone sounds and quickly decided that I liked the sort of granular delay sound of the Big Sky preset they included. Finally, I decided to make the instrumental bridge a bit sparse and ethereal, using only the Vespertone granular keyboard over a layer of ambient swells, but then transitioning into the sound of sitar, which I processed through the Mod Taj preset of Valhalla Vintage Verb, which I discovered was a good combo back in my sitar-oriented Episode 7 video. I wanted an ethereal lo-fi sound, so I opted to sing into my modified telephone microphone. However, I also wanted to add a touch of trivia modernism to the mix, so I added some extreme auto-tuned pitch correction via Isotope Nectar 3. I am fluttering by on a natural high in the marmalade sky. I've also really been trying to improve my mixing and mastering skills. I found that tools for EQ, gain, and compression are especially important for the mix, and I applied these to some of the tracks, including IK Multimedia's TR5 Black 76, which is an 1176 style compressor that I applied to the 12 string and drum tracks. I also adjust the gain and EQ through the new Safari Pedals plugins I've discovered, which are great plug-and-play solutions especially for these sort of mixing purposes, as well as for ways to add some retro or vintage vibes. My favorite is the Dragon EQ, which gives full range control over gain, EQ levels, and drive in an easy to use interface. I recently updated my mastering software to Isotope Ozone 11 Advanced, and I'm really glad I did. It's leaps and bounds better than the version 9 Elements one I was using, with great curated presets by professional producers, as well as much better standardization of volume levels. Here's the unmastered mix. range and bass detail settings chosen by mastering engineer Greg Cobby.
lot during the creation of this video, and if you've enjoyed coming along for the ride, be sure to like and subscribe for more cosmic content.